Hi, everyone. Just a few words about myself. My name is Ivan Polyanov, and uh, I'm in charge of front-end development at Nginx. In the past years, I often faced the task of doing A-B testing at my previous workplaces. I have used many different types of A-B test systems, from self-made systems to Adobe Test and Target. But my experience is that for a big cacheable application, it is great to use something simple and familiar, like Nginx, of course. First, I would like to show why we need A-B testing. The main purpose of A-B testing is to check hypotheses about web interfaces. For example, the Add to Cart button. So uh, the designer drew it blue, since design, designers like blue colors. Let's assume the conversion of clicks on this button is 1%. It means uh, that one of 100 visitors to this page just one clicks on the button. And uh, suddenly an idea comes to the project manager. What if the visitors don't see uh, this button because neighboring buttons are also blue? Let's try to make this button red and compare conversion with the blue variant. But there is a risk of making the button red for the entire audience, and it's likely that it will scare the visitors and will lead to a lower conversion rate. With Nginx, it is easy to show the red button to a small portion of visitors and show the original blue variant to the rest. Another purpose of A-B testing is testing the performance of new version of your applications. Let's assume you refactor your application and you have doubts. Deploying the application to all users could be very risky and could create a bad user experience. With Nginx, we can test changes in the UI and do performance testing of the application with a split of target group audience. The only thing we need is an Nginx and proper configuration. Let's see how to construct this configuration. To build A-B testing infra infrastructure, we need two modules. U first module is the user ID. Second, split clients. Both of these modules are included by default in Nginx and are fairly simple to set up. User ID model is designed to generate a unique identifier of the visitors to set a cookie. We will split the audience into groups by this identifier. In its simplest form, its configuration should only include the name, the lifetime of the cookie, domain, and cookie path. Next, we need a variable in our configuration for these visitors. ID. The variable which we'll, we will use has to represent the state of two internal variables of user ID module, UID got and UID set. To create a new variable, we will use the map directive in the Nginx configuration. Why is that? Let's say a visitor comes to check our application for the first time. We don't know anything about this new visitor, and the user ID model creates a cookie with UID. In this case, we read variable UID set. Look at the third string. If a visitor comes with UID cookie, we can read this ID from the UID got variable. However, since the user can come with the wrong cookie, we have to read the UID variable first. Now th that we already know uh, how to assign a uni unique identifier to visitors, it is time to split them into groups. The main job of splitting is done by split lines module. Internally, it takes a hash of the past parameter and takes a numeric representation of the hash. The algorithm 
algorithm that is used is murmur hash. To the split clients directive, we just need to pass the resulting UID, the salt, and also pass the name of the variable that will receive the value of the group. Inside the directive, we specify the dis distribution. Here we see the percentage from hash by UID and the value of the group corresponding to this percentage. The top 10% of our audience will fall into group one, second 10% fall, falls to group two, etc. The result is a vari variable with a group that can be read in the engine's configuration and use for instance in a proxy pass directive. This was uh, mo the most simple configuration to split the entire audience into n groups by UID. <laughs> I started my talk with a simple example about the red button. But uh, how do we use this configuration to change the design of a button? There are two options. The first option is to pass uh, the group as a header to the backend. This option is bad due to the following reason. Usually we use Nginx to cache uh, backend responses. Thus, you have to use an obtained split group in the cache key. Accordingly, the cache size will increase and the cache heat will decrease in direct pro proportion to the number of groups. The second option is my favorite. SSI, server side includes. Please raise hand if you use SSI in Nginx. <laughs> Just two, <laughs> well. Uh, look at this example. Uh, imagine that your backend provides two variants buttons at once. Nginx caches these answers and then decides which version to send to the visitor. It's simple. Also, if you have a rich JavaScript interface, you can bring a group in the script tag and reach to it from your J JavaScript code and then decide which variant to show. Don't be afraid about archaic SSI syntax. You can write a helper for your template engine and generate SSI more, more comfortably. Usage of SSI will allow you to use the cache intelligently with content that you split. When working with split clients module, you need to remember the following. To obtain reliable results for every experiment with the splitting, you have to use a separate split clients directive with unique salt. In other words, each experiment has to be located within its own distribution. Don't worry, it does, does not consume many resources inside Nginx. These days, using automation of configuration management is reasonable, reasonable to generate these directives with the Puppet, Chief, maybe Ansible, but it's often necessary con to control experiments without touching DevOps. To solve this problem, you need to create a simple admin panel. The very problem is beyond the scope of this talk, but I will tell you what sort of output this tool should give. First, you need to take care of a set of split clients directives. R remind, one split client for a single experiment. With, vari with variables with groups, which correspond to the visitor, you can generate a file with uh, the description of the experimentation that is involved. For the file name, we simply use the concatenating group variables. Inside, this, inside each file, we set the SSI variables corresponding for the experiments for visitor. Next, 
we need to describe the location that would be aliased to our generated files. As you can see from the slide, we simply substitute variables in the alias directive. Next, we need to include this location within uh, our web pages. Thus, uh, by including the file to a page, there will be av available variables that can, we can use in our templates. Through the regeneration of this file, the state of experiments can be changed for specific groups. The issue of the delivery of this files to the front end is open and can be solved any way you want. For instance, it could be our scene. So we got a flexible and cacheable way to A-B testing based on Nginx and SSI. Logging and calculating. Uh, since we are dealing with variable groups, they can be used in the, the log format directive and can be processed. So as I mentioned earlier, you can put the value of groups variables in the JavaScript on the page and use third-party analytic systems on client side. In conclusion, I want to give some advice. Again, always use single split lines directive for one specific experiment. And don't not forget from time to time the salt in your free experimentation groups. Thank you. That's it. <laughs>